Hey, it's Daryl. We are going to uh, put an Adams Arms gas piston system on a uh, direct impingement um, mid-length AR-15. We have cleared the weapon, new magazine in place. Uh, we have visually checked the chamber. Chamber's clear, and uh, let's get started. We're going to pop the pins out that connect the lower receiver to the upper receiver. All right, so what comes with the kit is the Adams Arms uh, gas block itself. This is the part that replaces the um, triangular front sight base gas block on a standard AR-15 rifle or um, carbine. And it's adjustable, different positions, gas setting positions. This is the rod that's going to uh, replace the direct impingement gas tube. This is the Adams Arms bolt. It's different than a standard AR-15 bolt. The key is completely different. This is where the rod strikes the key. And this is the bushing that goes uh, into the receiver. It goes in this hole that normally the, the DI tube goes into. This uh, rod rides through that bushing. And it's stainless steel so that it doesn't wear out the aluminum on your upper. And then this uh, spring goes on the back of uh, the bolt that comes out of your rifle. This kit does not come with its own bolt. It comes with the carrier, but not the bolt. And this fits on the back of there. And we'll be removing these gas rings in just a second. But that's basically what you get in the Adams Arms gas piston system. All right, what we need to do next is change out the bolt out of the bolt carrier. Adams Arms supplies a bolt carrier uh, with the kit. And as you can see, the key, this is the key on a typical AR-15 bolt, the key is different. Um, rather than a gas impingement tube coming in inside the key, which blows the bolt back, uh, as I showed you earlier, the piston rod hits this uh, flat space here, and that's how it operates. But we are going to use the bolt from your AR-15, um, and we're gonna retrofit it into the Adams Arms bolt carrier. So let's do that real quick. All right, so we're just gonna pop out the retaining pin. Comes right out. Take out the firing pin, comes right out, which just allows us to rotate the cam pin 90 degrees. It can't be in the forward position, it's got to be back. Rotate that 90 degrees, and then that pops out like that. We're going to pull the bolt out of the bolt carrier. And the next step is we're going to remove these gas rings that are on the back of the bolt right here. So what we're going to do is using a pocket knife, fine blade, just peel those off. All right, now that we have removed the gas rings from the bolt, we're just gonna take the bolt spring, and it goes right on the back, just like that. All right, what we need to do for the, um, to take off the gas block and uh, try and get a front sight base on the AR-15 is find out which side of these, um, taper pins are smaller because you have to push the opposite direction. You don't want to, if you, if you push the fat side, you're going to be tightening that. So on this particular model, I think on most Air 15 models, um, we're going to be punching from this side. And we've already pre-punched these just to make them a little bit easier. These were fairly tight, but you just use a 5 30 seconds punch. Typically we would be using, you could use a, a block of some kind, but I'm just showing you that without a block, you can make this work. If you have just a, a wooden handle of another hammer, you can lay that down, and as long as you have a nice surface. And So now the pins are out, what we're gonna do is, we've already loosened this, the A2 uh, flash hider and the crush washer. We're just gonna gently tap the sight off. You can kind of twist that off if you want there. And then we're also going to take off the cap that holds the part of the front, the uh, front hand guard on. So this is what the barrel looks like without the typical regular front sight base on it. Here's your, the hole that your gas goes in through. And um, we're going to put the A2 hider back on. Mainly it's just a thread protector so that when we're assembling the rest of the components, we don't uh, jack up the threads on the barrel. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the stainless steel bushing 
and it's going to go, it's a little difficult to see, it's going to go in the hole right, right there. And then this tool is going to be the part that we're going to use to uh, drive that in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of um, white grease and we're going to just slightly grease up the, um, the bushing before we put it in. And then we're also going to put a little bit on the dowel, this, the steel dowel that we're going to use. The idea behind that is this will hold on there as we put it into the receiver. And we're going to get it set in first, making sure that it's going straight in. And then uh, once it's going straight in, we can, uh, we can push it in and then use a little bit, force with the, a little bit more force with the hammer and just tap it into place. All right, and then we're just going to gently tap this in. All right, we just got to make sure that we keep it in alignment as we do that. Tap that in. All right, so after a little bit of tapping, uh, we have got the bushing uh, slightly below flush into the hole there inside the upper receiver. And there we go. Now we're ready for the next step. Right, the next thing we need to do is take the cap that comes with the uh, modified handguards. And this is the, just the, the handguard cap that holds the handguards together. Um, and it slides onto the barrel. Just like this. It's modified to fit the gas block. So this is special. You can't use your regular cap. After we have the handguard cap in place, we're just going to slide the Adams Arms gas block on. And then... I'm going to tighten it just barely, not too tight, so that if I adjust it, it stays in, stays in place. And then I'm going to look down, it's actually right on. Just visually inspect it to make sure that the, the lines on the Picatinny are totally parallel with the lines on the top of the receiver. So once you more or less have the, the gas block aligned with the, the upper receiver, just make sure it's all snug. So now we're just going to try um, to make sure we're aligned with the drive rod. Put it through. You have to make sure that all the components of your delta ring are, have the holes lined up. All right, so now that we have visually aligned the upper receiver with the Picatinny on the, on the, the, block, the gas block itself, we're just going to check to see that this moves freely and it does now there could be two things you need to adjust here either either this isn't perfectly aligned with the upper receiver or the timing could slightly be off on your your barrel nut so you would need to use your armor's tool and you could kind of visually see if there's a little gap on this side and it's touching on that side it might be binding there either way you might as, as I just had to do you might have to adjust the timing ever so slightly make sure that you're moving freely there. So now let's move on to the next step. All right, what we're going to do now is put the charging handle in and the modified bolt. Put this forward and we're going to need to put a little bit of pressure on the back of the bolt because remember this is in here with, this, with the spring and the assembly. And then what we're going to do using two business cards is just check the gap right here. And the gap we're checking is between the drive rod and the gas block itself. If you don't have a, any other way of checking it, you can use a couple of business cards and just see that you have clearance there. That's all you need is a couple of business cards. Real easy way to do that. If those don't fit in there freely, then it's too tight. So now that we know that the alignment's correct and that our piston is moving freely, the drive rod is moving freely, we're gonna go ahead and just tighten this down or just until it's really snug. So what we need to do next is take the gas plug back out take the drive rod back out and then put the assembly back together and the drive rod assembly goes this way and this goes back in here there we go with our kit came the modified handguards, which are cut and designed to be used with the gas system. So we've already installed those, and last but not least, we're just going to put a, a fresh crush washer on and then reinstall 
our A2 flash hider. And then we're just going to use the armorer's tool to get the timing right on it. Now that we have the upper complete assembled, we're going to go ahead and put it on the lower. Push the first pin in first, and remember, the bolt now has a spring on it, so you're going to have to hold the back of the bolt carrier in as you assemble it. So after you do that, we're going to want to do a couple checks just to make sure it's functioning. It seems to be functioning well. And then, of course, you want to attach your optics back on there. You put your backup sight back on, any magnification that you want, and you're ready for the range.